Hey everybody, tonight we're going to talk about reading the error log from PowerShell. Now this is a relatively straightforward process. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it both on a default instance and on uh, named instances. And I'm going to use the SQL provider for this one. Um, maybe I'll do one with SMO later. Um, I haven't decided yet, but if I do, then I'll go ahead and tie them together for a group for, as a group for you guys so you can go ahead and see. Anyway, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off here. I'm in uh, SQL PS for uh, SQL 2008, but it doesn't matter. I just You can do it from PowerShell proper. I just don't have the provider loaded on this box. So uh, you start out very easily. You take a variable. You set it equal to an instance of directory... Now, I know that this box only has uh, only has one instance, so there we go, now if I say A, then I get that default instance, right? Now if I want to read the log, read error log, and give it a minute here to come back, and it should just fill the screen. There we go, now we have the error log. And you can do stuff with that, right? Oh, look at that, I'm full of backup events, okay. so. One more time, just to show you how easy that is. You start off by setting uh, an instance of A equal to directory, and then uh, SQL server uh, colon SQL uh, backslash, and then server name, right? Once I do that, then I just say, then I just call the read error log method, and I'm done. That's all pretty easy. But when you get to named instances, it's not really that easy. So let's take a look here at this other box. Um, oops. Let's go on clear screen here. And now let's say... Here and I'll do a directory now. You see, I don't have a default a default instance here. I have three named instances, and if I try to do that exact same thing that I did before, if I say a equal that equals directory backslash and here. You can see it says it doesn't contain that method, right? And same thing if I set it to one of the instances. I get the exact same thing, right? So we have to be able to find a way to do one of two things. To either cycle through all the instances or uh, to, to set a specific error log that we want to go through. So let's say that we want to do the error log for SQL 02. Why not, right? So that's actually pretty easy. It only takes a small modification. So right here I'm doing the same thing, which is going to enumerate all of these, because I'm doing this at the server level. And if I do this, let me show you one more time, it's going to get me all three of these instances right here, right? But I'm only interested in number two. So the easy way to do that is to pipe that to a WHERE clause. Instance name equals and then I'll say SQL 02 now I've got that single instance now if I do read log read error log I get my log it's that simple if I want to enumerate through all of them that really shouldn't be too hard here let me clear the screen so uh, doing this to all three instances, let's say I want to discover all three instances and and look at all their logs. Maybe I'm going to put them in a, uh, in a text file, maybe I'm going to send them to a database for further processing or for history, whatever, right? That's actually pretty easy as well. I'm going to say A. I think I'm going to say A. Equals... Oops, there we go again. Equals... SQL MCM come on. Eh. Oh. Sorry about that. Messed that up. Now I gotta wait for it to time out. I'm gonna pause it until it times out. 
Okay, finally. All right, man, one little typo and it just ruins your whole night. Okay, so I didn't mean to do that. I meant to say directory of that. There we go. So again, I've got that, right? Now all I have to do is cycle through those. So I'll say A, pipe that to a for each. Don't forget your curlies. And read error log. Now, remember again, I've taught this many times, but the percent is uh, <clears throat> an alias for for each inside your curlies. This is the current iteration variable, so for each instance, I'm saying call the read error log method. Now that's a lot longer than the last one was, so we suspect that it's that it's each one of those. But you know, let's make sure. And let's say uh, before each one of those, let's go ahead and print the instance name. And you can see those little breaks in there. So uh, here I've got SQL 1. Here I've got SQL 2. And here I've got SQL 3. So I have enumerated all the instances and I have uh, spilled the log. And so far so good, right? Okay, let me go ahead and clear the screen. Okay, sorry about that, I had to go put the boys to bed. Okay, now, if I remember correctly, we were talking about the, the log history, right? So, logs don't have, I mean, uh, a server doesn't have just one log, right? I mean, it, it keeps a history of logs, and maybe you want to search through all of them. Maybe you want to see the number of occurrences of an event, or maybe you just want to save them all off somewhere, right? So, rather than, you know, just doing the current log, Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would get uh, all of the logs, right? So let's start by doing a git member on A. No, let me see. Gotta go here. Okay. And on A, we have. <clears throat> uh, we're looking for something that enumerates. Uh, da -da -da -da. Enumerate error logs. That's what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and look what what enumerate error logs does for us. So we'll say a dot. I'll capitalize it for you. Enumerate error logs. Okay. Okay. That's fine. So what I'm gonna do now? I need to. Uh, let me do this. I need to start over. A equals directory colon slash sql slash and let's go ahead and just we'll limit it to one instance so you can see what we're doing and then we'll bring it back um da -da 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 -da. what did i say that was that was a where Should just be able to go up now. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I have my my uh, error log enumeration, and you can see here that I've got zero through uh, six, right? So that's archive number and name. Name, archive number. They happen to be the same, right? Now let's do a git member on A again. Oops, there it is. And if you notice here. Uh, what were we doing before? Read error log. That's right. So come down here to read error log, and you notice the refresh method. If we can follow it all the way across, uh, not refresh, read error log. Read error log right there. Comes here, and it has an overload. So I can call it with no parameters and get the current log, or I can call it with the log number as an overload, and I can call a specific log number. So since I have, where are they? These log numbers right here then all I gotta do is loop through them and I should be able to load up every single log uh, and take a look at it, right? So let's go ahead and, and enumerate through all of the logs and see what we get. Now, ordinarily I would do that here at the command line, but this is actually gonna be like a, a loop inside of a loop. So let's go ahead and do that in a file, shall we? 
Let's see, let's go to... Let's put it in a temp folder. Let's create a new file. And let's call it... There we go. Yes, I'll open it up. Okay, so let's start with what we've got so far. Uh, we'll say cache A equals directory SQL server SQL MCMCon. And let's go ahead and do it for all of them. As long as we're here, let's go ahead and do it for all of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to discover every instance on the box and we're going to pull in all of their logs. Not only the current ones, but all of the ones that are in history as well. So I've got that. Let's leave a little space. And I want to say for each one of those, I'll go ahead and drop this guy down a little bit. Because I'm going to put a bunch of stuff in the middle here, I think. We'll see if we can figure this out. Uh... I'm still going to print my instance name like I did before. I still want to see that, right? And now let's say for each one of those, so what I'm saying now is for each one of these uh, in A, for each instance that I pull up, uh, I want to, I'll call it logs. I want to set logs equal to in, um, error logs. There we go. And now I'm going to say for each one of those, uh, and I'll just call it a log, for each log in logs. Why not, right? I'm very clever that way. Let's go ahead and start up our second loop here. Oops. I'll put in another. There we go. I always like to close my curlies first. So. While I'm inside of here, I'm going to say here dot close that, and I'm going to say now. I hope I got this right. Here, let me save that. Let's walk through it real quick, and maybe, maybe I'll be lucky and I got it right first off. Okay, so. Uh, we already know how to do this. We're setting A equal to uh, the server instant, to the server right here, right? To the directory of the server. So what this is going to be is a list of instances. So we're going to take that list of instances and pipe it to a for each. For each one of those, I want to print the instance name. Sure, why not? Now, uh, for, uh, for each instance, because I'm still inside of this loop right here, right? I want to instantiate a variable called logs and I want to set it equal to that instance's list of error logs. So I'm going to call the enumerate error logs method and uh, I'll get a list of uh, I'll get a list of error logs uh, both present and history for this instance then the next time it'll fill it up and it'll get me for the second instance and the next time it'll fill it up and give me for the third instance, right? Now uh, while still inside this first instance loop, right, I'm saying for each log n logs, okay, um, and put some more curlies in there. Uh, see there? Look at that. I already see an error. Bloop. I want to say take the current iteration variable of the cursor. Now that happens to be this cursor, not this cursor. Now the question is why isn't it this cursor? Um, uh, my guess is because it's, uh, it's going to, it's going to return a data table. So, uh, you can't do that with a data table. You have to use a regular for each, a good old fashioned for each, right? So we got a for each here. If this, if this returned an object, if this returned like an error log object, then I could easily do, uh, I could easily do this method right here, right here, but it doesn't. It returns a data table, I'm sure. So, <clears throat> because of that, I have to use the for each. And so that means that this guy right here doesn't belong to this guy. He belongs to this guy. Okay? So, for each 
one for each instance or for each I'm sorry for each log and logs so in our case 0 through 6 that we just saw uh, that we just saw in here right where is it for each one of these now I'm, I'm cycling through these guys for each one of those I'm gonna call the instance read error log and I'm gonna pass it the current log okay so let's see if I'm stupid I know I know waiting with bated breath right so let's say uh, oh. temp there we go and then we'll say it's error logs right and let's see what happens okay what did I do? Did I save that last change? Dun, 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 dun. Let's see here. There we go. Yeah, I didn't save that last change. And here we are enumerating through all of the logs, present and history, for all of the instances on this box. I don't know about y'all, but that's pretty badass, right? Good, good, good. Now maybe sometime I'll come back and show you what we can do with them. Let's see if I can find my instance. No, it goes too far up. But you know the instance is there, so there's no need to uh, uh, there's no need to harp on it. Now, what I could do um, is, as I do this, if I want to do something, I could say uh, I could do something like that and just print the log name. But let's do something. Let's see if we can do something here. Uh, let's do that. I'm just spitballing here, guys. I have no idea. Let's do that just to just to see if it'll work, and maybe we can see a little something. See there. So you can see it rolling through the logs there. That gives you a little visual cue. There you go. We'll uh, we'll wait for that to finish. There we go. And there's number six, right? So there we go. And if I decide to do another one in this series, like I said, I'll uh, I'll be sure and, and tie them together so you can you can see when it's done. But uh, that's more than the basics of how to work with logs in PowerShell. Talk to you later.